Most all business owners are LLCs or sole proprietors. And sometimes business owners come into the office trying to figure out, well, should I stay as an LLC? Should I switch to an S corporation? When does it make sense to switch to an S corporation? My name is Carlton Dennis. Welcome back to Taxes Made Simple. And in this segment today, we're gonna to be talking about how S-Corps can save you money on taxes. But before we go into that, it reminds me of a story that I have to share with you guys. This past December, I was up late nights filling out late S elections for a lot of clients who qualified to still have late S elections. And part of the reason why I was doing this was to help those clients avoid self-employment tax. So the first thing that we're gonna go over is lesson number one. What is self-employment tax? So in order to understand how S-Corps can save us money on taxes, we have to understand what self-employment tax is. In order to understand self-employment tax, we have to look at who is subject to self-employment tax. Any person who is a business owner, who is a 1099 contractor, is self-employed, which means that no taxes are being withheld from the wages you receive, the compensation you're getting, or the commission checks you're receiving. So what this means is, is that your income is going to need to be subject to federal taxes by the IRS, state taxes if you're in a state that taxes, but Social Security and Medicare tax as well. Now the government views you as an employee, but they also view you as an employer of your own business. Did you guys know that social security is 6.2% and Medicare taxes 1.45%? That equals 7.65%. So if you're being taxed by self-employment tax, you're gonna pay the employer side 7.65%, but you're also gonna have to pay the employee side 7.65%. This is what makes up self-employment tax, which is roughly 15.3%. Now, I want to reiterate, if you have an S corporation, you are not paying self-employment tax. We will go into what payroll tax is. But if you're a sole proprietor or you're an LLC earner and you make 1099 income, you are paying into self-employment tax on all earned income you receive. So if you have income and expenses, your net income that's left over is the amount that you're taxed on. This is the amount that's subject to federal taxes, state taxes, and this 15.3% of self-employment tax. So in order to understand more about how the s -Corp can save us on taxes, we need to learn about payroll. Lesson number two, what is payroll inside of an S corporation? In order to understand how S corp owners save on taxes, we first must understand payroll. S corp owners save on taxes by becoming W-2 employees underneath their own business. That's correct. They are taxing themselves as a W-2 employee. And this is different than when you're a sole proprietorship or when you're an LLC. When you're a sole proprietorship and when you're an LLC, you are only just a shareholder underneath your business. So what that means is, is as money comes into your bank account and as you pay yourself out, whether it's in the form of a check or just pulling money out of your bank account, that is not considered payroll and your business does not receive a deduction. The government calls this a distribution. Now, for business owners who are operating as an S corporation, the difference lies here. When you get to the end of the year as an S corp owner, one of the rules that the S corp owner has to do is that the S corp owner has to pay payroll taxes and take a reasonable compensation. So what this means is, is that the S corporation is going to become an employee underneath the business. That's correct. When you become an employee underneath the business, the IRS no longer views you as just the shareholder. And this is where the self-employment tax gets eliminated. One thing that we have to understand about payroll taxes is that we are paying taxes based on the amount of money we have decided to pay ourselves. Now, one thing to keep in mind with taking payroll as an S-Corp owner, you are still paying taxes. You're going to pay taxes on business income that you chose not to pay yourself, but you are gonna pay payroll taxes on the amount of W-2 income that you chose to pay yourself. I would like to go over an example with you guys. 
Let's say that we made $100,000 net income inside of our business, and we decided to place ourselves on payroll for $30,000. Our business is gonna receive a $30,000 deduction because we, the owner, decided to place ourselves as a W-2 employee underneath our own business. Now that the S Corporation has $70,000 in net income, the S Corporation is still going to pay taxes on that $70,000. You, the taxpayer, that paid yourself the $30,000 in W-2 wages will pay payroll taxes on those W-2 wages. So you might be telling yourself, wait a minute, if I'm an S corporation, I'm still subject to taxes. I have to pay payroll taxes, I have to pay federal taxes, and I have to pay state taxes. So when does it make sense for me to switch from a sole proprietorship or an LLC to an S corporation? Well, I have some news for you guys. As accountants, we look to answer this question for our clients all the time. Depending on your state, there is a certain threshold to where the benefits outweigh the cost from switching from a sole proprietorship or an LLC into an S corporation. Let's go over some of those costs that are incurred when you're switching from a sole proprietorship to a corporation. One of the biggest costs to switching from a sole proprietorship or an LLC to a corporation is your franchise tax that you pay to the state as well as your tax preparation fees. On average, tax preparation for a corporation is going to be anywhere between $1,000 to $2,000. And in most states, you're paying anywhere between $200 to $800 just to have your business active every single year. And S corporation owners have to take payroll. That can range anywhere between $500 to $1,000 a year. All in, you are going to be at around $3,000 to $3,500 on a yearly basis to have your S corporation. So we want to know, when does the benefits outweigh the cost to switch from an LLC to an S corp? In our office, we've come to know that it makes sense when your business has netted income in excess of $40,000. As soon as you are over the threshold, this is when the benefits outweigh the cost to switch out of your LLC or your sole proprietorship to an S corporation if you have earned income. Right now, we are talking to business owners who are making earned income. If you own rental real estate, this is not the topic for this discussion. We will discuss S Corps and real estate in a later topic. But right now, I wanted you guys to have that answer on whether or not you should be thinking about switching from the sole proprietorship or LLC over into a corporation. The next thing we need to understand in order to know why S Corp saves so much money on taxes is this whole topic around reasonable compensation. So we talked about how S corporations have to take payroll, but they have to take payroll in a reasonable amount. So what is deemed a reasonable amount to the IRS? And what is deemed a reasonable amount to taxpayers? Determining a reasonable compensation is the most murkiest part of S corps. The reason why is because the government bases reasonable compensation based on your industry and your geographical location. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I'm an engineer in Southern California and geographically located in Los Angeles, there are engineers that are making the medium salary of 60,000 every single year. That means that engineers in this area of Los Angeles have a medium price point of getting $60,000 in compensation a year. In the IRS, that would be a reasonable compensation for an engineer. But let's just say my business only made $70,000 and I only had net income after all expenses of $50,000. It wouldn't make sense to put myself on payroll for $60,000, would it? No, and I don't even have enough income in my business to justify taking payroll of 60,000. So this is when we have to start breaking down this reasonable compensation term. We have to look at it more closely and under fine lens. What is your industry? And what are you doing? And where are you located? And next, what is your net income. Rule of thumb in our office is we don't allow business owners to take a reasonable compensation on less than 30% of net income, which means that if you made $100,000, at minimum, you need to take $30,000 in payroll and reasonable compensation. Yes, your business will receive a deduction when you do take this reasonable compensation, but it's still something we need to take. Now I want to transition into is reasonable compensation saving me more money than paying self-employment tax by being a sole proprietorship in an LLC? This is where you see the difference lie. When you take reasonable compensation, 
you're taking a far reduced amount of money on payroll that shows up on the tax return. Going back to that example that we just gave you, if we made $100,000 in our business and we took $30,000 in payroll, on the tax return, it's only showing up as $30,000 in W-2 wages. That's subject to federal taxes and state taxes. $30,000 as a single filer puts you into the 12% tax bracket. You're gonna pay about $3,600 on that. We're okay with that. If you're in the state of California, that's about another eight and a half percent. Then you have your other 70 grand that was left in the business that's gonna flow over to you that you're gonna pay taxes on. Now, one thing you have to understand about flow through entities, such as a sole proprietorship, an LLC, and an S corporation, those are our flow through entities, is flow through entities receive a 20% qualified business income deduction. Now, that 20% qualified business income deduction is on net income, and there are certain thresholds. So when you're thinking about you know, does it make sense for me to take a huge payroll? You first need to look about how much money is gonna be subject to that 20% QBI deduction. Let's go back to our example. If we had $70,000 left over net income in our business, 20% of $70,000, guys, we can do simple math, that's 14 grand that we do not have to pay taxes on. That's our deduction. Now we have $56,000 in taxable income that flows over into our individual taxes. You guys have heard the term flow through entity. What that means is, is that the S corporation does not pay taxes. The shareholder, you and I, we pay taxes at the individual level. So when that money that we didn't pay ourselves flows over to our tax returns, that's where it is subject to just federal and state taxes no self-employment tax. This is part of the reason why S corporations are so powerful and why we recommend switching to an S corporation if you are making earned income in excess of 40 grand. But of course, it is always important to speak to your tax provider because every single person has different goals and different visions. You may have a vision to eventually get a business evaluation and to sell your business, which may mean needing to have a C corporation and not even looking down the avenue of an S corp. So I urge you, to do tax planning like most S-Corp owners do, meet with a tax strategist to figure out which strategies make the best sense for you to leverage now and to leverage later. My name is Carlton Dennis, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And if you liked this video, I would love for you to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.